with the the northern kings and uh, Jabin, the king of Hazar. Uh, he gathers these kings, and the kings in the north are supposed to be <coughs> mightier than the kings that are, were in the south. And so uh, they band together, and they came out, all their armies with them. Uh, the Bible says that it's as many people as the sand is on the seashore. Uh, and then uh, they are equipped with horses and chariots, something uh, new in this, this modern warfare. Uh, and so, uh, and then it tells us in verse six, it says, yet the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid because of them. For tomorrow at this time, we're going to turn them all over to Israel and they are as good as dead and you shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua and all the men of war came upon them suddenly at the wars and attacked them, defeated them. Um, then it drops down and tells us that uh, Joshua then turned back and captured Hazar and struck its king with the sword. And then it says Israel uh, burned did not burn any of the cities that stood on their mounds except for Hazar alone, which Joshua burned. It says, all the spoils of these cities, the cattle, uh, the sons of Israel took as plunder. So then Joshua took all the land, the hill country, all the Negev, and all the land of Goshen, the lowlands. Um, it says, Joshua waged war a long time with all these kings. And, um, and, and we had mentioned before, we thought it took maybe as long, some scholars think as long as seven years uh, for them to conquer Canaan completely. It says there was not a city which made peace with the sons of Israel, except the Hivites living in Gibeon. They took them all in battle for the Lord for it was the Lord uh, who hardened their hearts to meet them in the battlefield. We talked a little bit about that when the Lord hardens um, people's heart in the Bible, he just brings out their true heart, you know, uh, what they truly uh, have what's hidden in the recesses of, of their heart. Uh, and we talked about, you know, we like to say the Lord knows my heart, but sometimes it's a scary thought because we have some things hidden in our hearts that we don't want anybody to know. And, uh, and so that, that's why we, we confess daily, because uh, there are some things that, that sometimes tend to, to sneak out. Uh, so we confess daily these things. And so then Joshua came, at that time eliminated the Anakin from the hill country, from Hebron, the Burr, and Anab, and from the hill country of Judah and all the hill country of Israel. And we talked about the Anakin. Uh, we next see them uh, with David because Goliath is, a, is from this clan. That's right. He is the Anakin. That's right. So uh, that's when we, we next get, uh, we see them. And that's, what, four or five hundred years later when David comes on. So uh, they were not totally uh, destroyed. Uh, during this time. So, so Joshua took the whole land in accordance with everything the Lord had spoken to Moses and Joshua gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their division by their tribes so the land was at rest from war. Bless your word, Father. We talked a little bit about uh, the word inheritance that how often Joshua uses that word a lot. The inheritance, you know, this is the promised land. Um, and it was an inheritance given to God's people, uh, starting with Abraham. <clears throat> and so uh, it is an inheritance to God's people. Anyone see anything, want to comment on about anything there before we jump to our printed passage on 104? We'll get some more once we start reading our printed passage. It lines up a little bit there. So we'll jump in there to page 104, 
the Hebrews other strength. Since we come to see in our study that the Hebrews not only thought of themselves as a people with place, they were also a people with presence. They were now secure in their sense of presence because of their confidence that the Lord was with them. And as we read in our last lesson, the Lord fought for Israel, coming from chapter 10. The Hebrews not only gave the world a belief in one God, but added to that with their belief that he was and is a living presence to all of his creation. It is true, of course, in Israel's earliest stages, they didn't understand the universal nature of his love and care. But they did understand that he was not an enigma, not the great unknown. He was a holy God, a father whose personal presence gave support, encouragement, and direction. It was this that gave them an, an awareness of their own presence as the people of God and prevented them from being intimidated by the superior enemy forces of the northern coalition of Canaanite kings. And it was this that enabled them with the passing years to achieve an ever, an ever larger uh, understanding of their God. It was their belief in God's presence that enabled the Hebrews to make that long march north from Gilgal to Merom in anticipation of, a, of meeting the and defeating their enemy. Yes, they were strangers in a strange land, but they knew their strength came because of God's presence with them, and that their strength couldn't be claimed because it was their right, but because it was God's gift to them. The Hebrew uh, strength can be ours, it says. This is courage and faith to press on and live a day at a time in spite of, of difficulties and seemingly bad odds or characteristics of God's of people of God in every century. There are those who would have us believe that with God, the odds should be tipped in a Christian's favor. We hear a great deal today about a gospel of success for the believer. But the facts of life make that notion a lie. As did the psalmist in the ancient times, we lament over the apparent propose, uh, proposing of the uh, wicked while the faithful endure hard a prospering of the wicked while the faith for in due hard and difficult times. But the message that comes to us over and over again in Joshua's story is be not afraid because of them. We can be certain that God is in the game with us at all times. Our times may be hard, the difficulties may even seem insurmountable, but with courage, and faith in God, we can handle the enemies in our lives. We'll stop right there for a second. Anything that stood out to you guys from our printed passage in the short little pieces that we just read? You know, that um, the part at the end where it says, um, but the message that comes to us over and over be not afraid mm -hmm. because of them. We can be certain that God is in the game with us at all times. You guys know me. I like to, you know, 
find encouragement. And you know, that's one of the reasons I, I like to come to Bible study to help get me through the rest of the week. But uh, it's uh, that right there, that statement alone is it's, it's an encouraging statement for, for, for me just to you know hear it that you know what God is in this with me. Yeah. You know, he, he's in this yeah. fight. He's in this with me. I ain't going through it by myself, although sometimes you sometimes you feel that way. Yeah. But that's not the case. That's what the enemy wants us to believe, that we in this by ourselves. But that ain't the case at all. Um, God is right there with us every step of the way. Uh, I like that part. Uh, I thought I saw something else, but I'll let somebody else go. strength. I like the fact that back then, the Hebrews, uh, they said that the Hebrews not only gave the world, mm. n not some, not east or west, but it gave the world the belief in one God. Because there was a lot of stuff going on during, during those times where they worship other things and idols and things like that. So right. it tells us today that uh, uh, there is only one God. I hear one of my top brothers always said, Buddha's dead, and he's dead, and that's so <laughs> true. I happened to, when I was in Vietnam, we went on what they call R&R. &R. I happened to see uh, one of the largest Buddhist statues uh, while I was in Vietnam. And I, I happened to know that by rubbing Buddha's stomach wasn't going to get me <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing, really. <laughs> and so I had sense enough to know that they were, they were worshiping Buddha, Buddha's dead. But here, here it says there's only one God. But added that that uh, their belief that he was living, God is living through all of us. Living and presence to all his creation. That means yeah. he's right here with us. Yeah. I don't care what you think, situation, like Brother Trust was saying, the situation, he's going through these fires and these trials and tribulation. What what that says, these instant putting people come into church, they think God works instantly. No, he doesn't work like that. It's a time for in Ecclesiastes tell you there's a time for this or a time for that. No. There is a time when God will work with you whatever you're going through. But understand you're not going through it by yourself. You he's right there with you. If people would understand that instead of coming in the church and think they're going to get that instant miracle or whatever and then run out the door because it doesn't happen, then, then go back and read, read the word of God. And then it says, here, here's a really good thing. We say this, but do we know what that really means? He says, he, it said was, but I'm saying he is a holy God. And, 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 and then it says, uh, uh, a father whose personal presence gave support and encouragement and direction. God does support. He does encourage. He does give us direction, but you've got to listen to the word of God. Uh, you know, pastors can get up and preach, but if you listen, if you hear it and you don't do it, it's like I used to tell prisoners down in, in the county, if, if you, if we are here teaching the word of God and you don't you don't do what the word of God says. It's like walking up to that brick wall and butting your head. Mm. That's exactly what it means to me. Then, then over here on page 105, it talks about, I want to turn it around. It says courage and faith. I say faith and courage. I, I put that in there. Faith and courage to press on, on a, press on and live a day, a day at a time. One day at a time. I don't even want to think about what's going to happen tomorrow. The reason, and the Bible says tomorrow is not promised. Do not worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Stop worrying about it. That's what God said. He don't say it like I'm saying it. But I believe what he's saying through his word. Do not worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Amen. Man, I'm, I'm glad Deacon Hughes brought up that living presence because I wrote to the side here to ask y'all a question. What does that mean to you? That he was and is a living presence. Uh, I, I want Kerry to 
know what your, your thoughts are. We, we, we know um, he's omnipresent, of course. Yes, um, uh, but, but in Genesis, you know, they heard the sound of God walking in the garden, you know. Uh, in these tents, you know, that they go in the holy of holies and stuff. But what does that mean to us today that he is a living presence among us? And, and Deacon Hughes touched on a little bit, um, so I'd be curious to, to hear you, the rest of your thoughts on that, that he is a living presence. Um, for me, it, it's just, uh, it's just a reminder that he's always there. This isn't something that we're reading about what he did in past times and we're celebrating what he's done, you know, before. He's constantly working miracles and being there for us on a daily basis, on a, on a every minute. He's always there yeah. and present for us. So um, while other people are like like Deacon Hughes mentioned, you know, they're Buddha. They they celebrating and worshiping him for what he's done in the past. So, you know, Gandhi and, and Muhammad and all that they all of those are dead. God is a living God, so he's always present and always with us no matter how, how much time passes. So it's just an amazing thing. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Deacon Sims, come on. I just want to add that uh, I believe that when you, when you look at a living presence as opposed to a, a dead presence, because that would be the opposite. Right. And so, in, in the sense of idols, they're present, but they're dead. Yeah. They can't do anything. That's good. You know, and so when you have a living presence, then that means he's active, he's present, he's yeah. conscious of who you are, what you need, and he's there for you. But a, a, a dead, present God can do nothing for right. you. He can't do anything for himself. That's <laughs> right. So what's he going to do for you? That's right. You know? so, so saying that he is a living, present God, yeah. that means a whole lot. He means he's one of a kind. Yeah. There's no other living, present God that we That's know right. of. That's right. He's one of a kind. Right. And he will do for us what he can do, which means that he's, I mean, is there anything too, God, too hard for this living, present God? There's not. That's right. That's absolutely right. If you look down, if you look down uh, in the area where it says the Hebrew strength can be ours, and this is exactly what we're talking about, mm -hmm. basically, it says, when we can be certain that God is in the game with us all the time. Right. I don't know. Let's take that game and the writer wants to use game. I want to use circumstances. I'm talking about whatever circumstances. Finances, illness, your kids, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, the intimate doubles and all that. Whatever you into, God is in the game with you. If you want to come down to that, you know, uh, life is to me is about onions. You know, <laughs> layer, you put one layer back, put the other layer back. But this is what I'm getting out of this. No matter what we're going through, you just gotta believe. First of all, you gotta you gotta have faith. You gotta have trust, and you must believe in what God's word yeah. says. Period. As young people. <laughs> Here he stops it right there. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, did Deacon Hughes say insignificant? In insignificant. Okay. Okay. I want to share that with Sister Donna. All right. <laughs> Dead idol would do. He's a living 
being that in there with us, and he's walking around present with us, yeah. and going to and ready to take us out of whatever it is, mm -hmm. because he can. We may not can deal with it. There are right. the Hebrew boys; they couldn't get themselves out. Of That's the right. But God, but that 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 fourth person that was in there with them. That's who got them out of the fire and kept them from us. It wasn't them. That. Right. And, and this, this here today, uh, it, it says, uh, but, and going down from where Deacon Hughes is talking, it says, but with our courage and faith in God, we can handle the enemies in our life. No matter what, the, what, what comes along, we can handle it. it. Because God is with us. But I want to go back up to something, if you don't mind, Come on. In, in that same paragraph. Where in the middle of it, where it says, we hear a great deal today about a gospel of successful believers. Yeah. And then it says, but the facts of life make that notion a lie. Now, I believe that it's true. I don't believe it's a lie. I think that we hear a great deal about a gospel of success for the believer. Right. If we're a believer, guess what? We have to. Right. And the success is that we have we, we have inherited eternal life. We're now we're now adopted into the kingdom. So that success means that we've also inherited heaven. Right. And, and because Jesus said that where I am, there you will be lost. Yeah. So I believe that it is success, and our success may not be in this life, but it's going to be it, it's on its way. That's it. That's it. is personal. So to me, the question is, is God present in your life? And, 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 and like, uh, if you think of that, you need to be able to be three Hebrew boys, Shedrach, uh, Meshach, and then the Hebrew. The presence of God was with them. He became personal. The ability of a deity to be present in human being, sometimes associated with the many presence. So it means personal. That, that, that the presence of God is personal. Is it present in your life? If so, how? It becomes to me a, a, a personal work and a personal uh, understanding and a personal relationship. I wanted to comment on that section where in here it said um, the Hebrews, you know, not only gave the world the belief in one God, but added to that, that their belief that He was and is a living presence. That section, and it makes me think of uh, what we say here sometimes: of uh, sometimes we the only Bible that people read, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, it seems like. You know what? What the writer was trying to get at was 
Hebrews and, and their walk and their connection with God and what he was doing for them uh, sort of uh, gave belief to the, to the entire world about you know what he was doing and for them and things and so what I get out of that is that you know we uh, we have to make sure that we're uh, that we can we, we're actually talking and walking the walk if you will right. you know of, of not just saying oh well you know what I, I believe in God and this and that and all that but we actually got to show it and live it and this should be in our actions not just the little lip service as they like to say so yeah. Amen. Y'all, y'all all said some, some good stuff, and Deacon Houston talking about the Buddha, and Deacon James was too, is the fact that you worshiping a God that can't get up on the mantle himself. Mm. You have to put him up there. What <laughs> kind of God is that? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. He can't speak, and if he falls off the mantle, he's probably going to get cracked. Well, you know, why, why would you, you worship a God like that? Um, the the, and, and something that, that Deacon Aniwa said about the personal relationship, the Bible tells us there's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within us, right? And so that, that's a personal relationship that you have with God. Uh, you know, Paul said that, that our bodies are our temples, you know. Uh, some temples are better than others. So, you know, uh, it says, do you know your bodies are, are temples from whom you have received from God? So, um, it says, therefore, honor God with your, with your, your temple, uh, which is your, your body. And so um, there are all, um, 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 when, you, when you understand the relationship that you have uh, with God, um, that it becomes a personal relationship, and it's one that is based on faith. It's based on faith. Um, uh, the relationship that we have with God. And something Deacon Trust said too about, you know, walking the walk and talking the talk. The devil will come at you in so many ways. Mm-hmm. And the thing that he wants to do is just put an ounce of doubt in your mind. You know, things will be going so bad for you, you'll, you'll ask yourself, where is God right now while I'm going through this, you know? You, things will be going so bad that you'll feel like God has has moved, removed himself from your presence. But God will never uh, remove himself from your presence. No matter how bad it gets, he's still there, no matter how bad it gets. And so, you know, you, you got to keep on pressing through. Um, and it don't, it, don't, it don't take much when you're going through a lot for that doubt to creep in. When you're going through a lot, I mean a lot, you know, everything seems to be turning left when you're trying to go right. And, and we have those moments, you know, and, and then you gotta realize and think about uh, everything that God has brought you through in the past mm-hmm. and the fact that he'll bring you through it too. Uh, we, we tell that story, a lot of preachers like to use it, about the, the car is driving through the storm. You know, he's driving, the rain's coming down so hard, he can't barely see in front of himself. And so he's thinking, should I pull over and wait it out? And then, and you know, he sees a bunch of cars on the side of the road, they pulled over and they waited it out. But then he thinks, well, let me go a little further and see if it's a little better. And so eventually, the storms are moving. So if you're going through, eventually, you're going to get to the end of the storm and it's done. And that's, that's how we have to be. We have to keep pressing forward because the devil wants you to think that your storm's going to last a long time. He, think, he wants you to think that you're going to be in this storm is never ending and you're, gonna, you're stuck in the middle of it. But when we trust God and we continue to press on no matter how bad it gets, mm-hmm. continue to press on. Um, and I'll tell you from, from personal experience, this last week, uh, it seemed like everything that I can think of has been going wrong. Uh, you know, um, um, I got a ride here today with Tyrone because I, my car, I think it's a radiator hose, um, is it, leaking. And I uh, uh, found out I was driving for a month with expired driver's license. Uh, and, and, you know, all kind of stuff just jump out at you and you're like, wow. You know, 
Um, and if you, and if you, sometimes you overthink things. Because if we think about who we are and what we are, are we worthy of what God does for us? Yeah. I'm gonna say no. Yeah, exactly. And so you start thinking about that, and you're like, uh, uh, you know, am I worthy? You know, everything that he's done for me already is enough. If he doesn't do anything else, enough. it's enough. Yes, sir. And so the devil comes along and he stands on the side of you and he tells you, you know, he's done with you. He's done all this for you. You still a, a sinner? Because we're all sinners, right? Yes, still. We're all a sinner. We won't be made perfect until we leave this place and meet God. That's right. That's right, Dick. Until we're laid out there, we meet God in that hour. We, we, we're, we're work in progress until that time. So the devil will come and he'll try to tell you that, that yeah, you, you're still a sinner and this and that. If I was God, I wouldn't help you out anymore. And, and, and it only takes a crack. You know, you know, water only needs a crack to see through. Only needs a crack. And the devil tries to see through that your, your spiritual armor. You know, we talk about putting on the old armor of God. The devil tries to find a crack in your armor so that he'll make you think that, yeah, God's done with you. He's, he, he's, he's finished with you. We have to endure. And, uh, uh, you know, the Bible tells us all the time that, you know, Christ suffered, so we're going to suffer. We have to endure. And then remember what he said, that he has overcome the world. You know, no matter what the devil tries to tell us, your circumstances are bad. The devil tries to tell you you're not going to get through it. But Jesus already told us he's overcome. And so we, we have to continue to, to press on and understand that we do serve the only true and living God. We serve the only true and living God. And so we have, to, we have to have that mindset about us. Even when things are bad, and I mean bad, uh, you, you, you think, you know, I went to church. I went to Bible study. I was in Sunday school. I'm praying every night, and the rain keeps falling on you. We have to press on. We have to. God is a promise keeper. Some deacon likes to tell us that. He is a promise keeper. And so God said he never leaves us or forsake us. Those who are his own, God will take care of them, no matter what the circumstances and the situations are. So we have to keep pressing on. So I'm glad y'all, 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 I love how y'all handle that question. Amen. Any other comments? Come on. Come on. All right, Brother Jones, then Dickie Chambers. Come on, Brother Jones. And there's a song called Mm. You know? so right. That's a beautiful song. I was going through something today, and that song happened to come on, and, and it was just changed my whole attitude about it because he was in the room with me. Yeah, hey, he was in the room. Yes. Where can I go that you're not present? That's right. Where can yes. I go? Hey, Amen. Deacon Chambers, come on. Right. That's right. That's right. He'll 
be in it with you. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's a that's the same piece that I had marked here too, and I had the the end of that mark that uh, the strength can't be claimed because of their right, but it was a gift of God to them. That's right. We 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 do, uh, you know, it it seems like we're a minority now. You know, when, when, you know, the religion and God was such a strong thing in the past in this country, and it seems like it, it, it's getting worse and weaker as we go on, that we are the, the strangers now. You know, when, when it be, was before, you know, this, guy, this country was based on it, right? They put it on the money. <laughs> if they put it on the money, they must mean it, right? Yeah, yeah, and so, so uh, <coughs> it does seem like it, it has changed, uh, and we are the strangers when, when um, this, this country um, was, was built on uh, God-fearing people, and uh, there, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of fear in people uh, anymore. Anyone else? Same thing in there. Pastor, I think that's the I think uh, whatever situation we find ourselves in, we need and ought to draw strength from John 11, verse 4. You know, that's the, the, the story about, uh, uh, I think it's Lazarus. What did I say? Okay. This sickness will not lead to death. Yeah, they say it's quit me. But when Jesus had it, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. <coughs> so what I'm saying is this. Whatever we are going through, whatever it is will not lead to our defeat. It is for the glory of God when we make it through. You know, the, we, 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 whatever it is, this will not lead to our demise. This will not lead to our demise. This will not defeat us. Right. It is for the glory of right. God. You know, that's 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 what popped in my head here. You know, how God, these things when you study and read the word of God, how is that making sense? Yeah. No, that that's good because the Bible tells you, you know, uh, that that God tells you know these things. These are are not for, for this or that. This is so that the glory can be given to God. You know, when he talked about the, the, the man being uh, born blind and asked, you know, which parents sinned, Sin. right? And he says, you know, not, neither sin. This was so, you know, God could get the glory for what he was about, about to do. And so, you know, uh, when we, we go through some things and we come out of it, you know, we, we should give God all the glory and the praise, uh, you know, and have a hallelujah good time, knowing that it was God who brought us through it. Not we ourselves, it was God who brought us through it. And, and you know, in talking about the, the Holy Spirit too, uh, the Bible says that, you know, the Holy Spirit twice, uh, takes up a dwelling within you, you know, and, and, and it stays there. 
uh, when when the whole when the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it stays there, you know, uh, with you. Um, um, when you are committed yourself to to God, um, and so so it's good when when our lives are uh, affected or led by uh, by the Holy Spirit, um, and so we we go through some things and um, um, and we 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 deal with some things, but we have to stay strong in our convictions that God will bring us through whatever it is that we are dealing with. The on page, did I hear somebody? On page, um, on page 104, too, in that top paragraph, um, and we touched on this a little bit, it says, you know, they had confidence that the Lord was with them. Um, confidence and, and faith reside in the same house. Uh, when you have confidence uh, that God can do something, uh, you have faith in believing that it will get done. And then on page um, 105, uh, where it says the Hebrews' strength can be ours, it says at the bottom, it says we can be certain that God is in the game with us at all time. Deacon Hughes had, had talked about this, and Deacon Chambers made the reference of the Hebrew boys. That, you know, <clears throat> the, when, when that's the, the one thing that, that the devil uh, really tries to get across to you, that when you're going through things, you're going through them by yourself. Mm -hmm. But you're not going through them by yourself. And, uh, you know, another uh, wonderful uh, example of Bible study is that, you know, we share with each other, you know, uh, uh, things that we may be going through so that it encourages someone else that, you know, I've been through this, you know, God has brought me through it. And so uh, that's one of the wonderful things about Bible study is that we can share, you know, how, how the Lord is, is bringing you through. Um, and and uh, and so uh, it says our times may be hard, the difficulties may seem insurmountable, but the courage and faith in God we can handle. Uh, with courage and faith in God, we can handle the enemies in our lives. And so uh, that's a that's a great point and a great message. Uh, Getting that message to, to sink in, you know, during the difficult times, you know, you have to be in God's words to hear these type of messages to encourage you that, that God will bring you through. Anything else? Come on, Pete. That should come up in our spirit. Well, you know what? I 
I've got a medical issue. The doctor that gave me a bad report. How I'm going? How am I going to handle that? Regardless, as a Christian brother and sister, God has showed us and told us how do we handle it. We handle it. We trust God. We have faith, and we believe in what He says. A promise keeper, as brother says. But we have to understand that when we go into it, we're not going to it alone. Yeah. I mean, that was one come up in your mind. Oh, look. oh man, the doctor that gave me this bad report, did you start worrying and what I'm going to do? What you going to do? You're going to go to God and say, Lord, how do I handle this? And as a brother and Christian brother tonight, a sister and brother tonight, we got our answer. But not only do we give us answers, it gives us the answer to answer someone else. Right. That is a that is a fact. And you young people are learning, period. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm 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 sure, I'm sure, and then we get digging to I'm sure that that people have had moments in their life where they couldn't sense God's presence. He's there. But things are so bad you feel like you can't sense his presence because things are so bad. And we have to uh, you know, like the story about pressing through the storm. You, you just can't give up because that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to give up. So we have to keep persevering. Deacon Chang. I, 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 I'm not going to say that I'm a believer. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Anyone else? Well, there's a that note, you know, Pastor, in Second Timothy one seven. That's what it speaks about fear. But I say that God has not given us. Yeah, it's fear is fear. Yeah. But our power and love yep. and of the sound. And I think it was Paul that said, when you don't know what to preach, preach the early Christ who crucified. Yes, Jesus, sir. You know, you know, I remember my pastor saying, yeah, 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 if you don't have to pray, just say, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you. That's good mm -hmm. enough. You know, for you cover yep. everything. You know, Jesus will fill in the blank. That's right. Jesus, thank you. That's right. He'll cover it all. Jesus, thank you for this. Jesus, 
Amen. That's right. He will cover it all. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Let's read a little further. A decisive victory. We know virtually nothing about what happened on that battlefield by the waters of Miron, except that Joshua launched a surprise attack against the vast northern army. The Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them and chased them unto the great of Zidon on the sea coast over 65 miles away and unto the valley of Mizpah eastward to the Jordan and they smote them until they left them none remaining. It was a decisive and total victory and following the holy war pattern the enemy was completely destroyed. But there's more. We read in verse 9 that Joshua followed the strategy the Lord had given him. He hamstrung the horses in the northern army and burned all their chariots. Following the decisive victory at Miram, uh, the mop and the mop up operation, Joshua unleashed his forces against Hazar and the other northern royal Canaanite cities. The destruction was fearsome and complete. Hazar was burned and the other cities were plundered. In cryptic language, we are given a colorful picture of the desolation and all the spoils of these cities and the cattle. And the children of Israel took for prey unto themselves, but every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them. Neither left they any to breathe. Israel's northern campaign was a complete success at that time. The land was ready for their occupation. There was no flip answers that speak to Israel's success. But most certainly one major reason was that they took God seriously when he said, fear not and do not be afraid. Fear is always a deadly enemy of God's will and grace. Amen, Deacon Hughes. Fear, like dry root, does its work unnoticed until all of a sudden our courage collapses. Fear always causes people to manufacture plausible reasons to cling to our limitations and quake before another superiority, another superiority. Then, too, fear rears its ugly head in the face of the unfamiliar. But at Miram, the unfamiliar machines of war that Israel's mighty men of valor had never faced before failed to cripple them with fear. Instead, in the face of the unknown and unfamiliar, they acted decisively and without fear. So often when the familiar is removed and replaced with requirements that push us beyond uh, what appears to be our limits, we tend to panic. When confronted with a new situation or a new approach, we're often heard to say, but we've never done that before. That's in reality, is the voice of fear. Rationalize, uh, like, rationalize it as well as we will, and we do, it is still fear. Another fear that frequently inhabits us as Christians is a fear of taking risks for God. We tend rather to adopt a play it safe philosophy that makes us comfortable with things as they are. But if Paul and Peter had played it safe, uh, the good news of Jesus Christ wouldn't have spread across the Roman Empire in a few short years. Christian history down through the centuries is marked with men and women who dare to risk taking the gospel every, to every continent.
with each pressing century, the risks have been different, but no less real. Our high-tech space age offers challenges to the Christian far different than were faced by our spiritual ancestors even just 100 years ago. But God's word to us is no different than the one he gave to Joshua over 3,000 years ago. Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hands. For us, this means the Lord will be with us every minute of our 24-hour day. Let's stop right there and for a minute and see what we can glean from our printed passage here. Anything that stood out to you from what we've read? Man, it's it's amazing when we look through these chapters on on uh, what they did with God and what they did without God. When they didn't consult God, they lost. They lost. And when they when God was with them, uh, they came to re the realization that when God is with us, if God be for us, who can be against us, right? Mm -hmm. And so they they had that confidence, like you said, Sister Harris. They they, they understood that God was with them. And so even though they were outnumbered, you know, by the other armies and stuff, God had told them, don't be afraid of them. I got you back. Don't be afraid of them. I got you. Any other comments? On page 105. Come on, come on, D. Right. That's right. That's, you that's, know, you know, uh, that used to be a catch and trade. 
and what made us understand that they're all now. It used to be a show on TV called The Fear Factor. Right. I was afraid to show that okay. for me. I would never, ever do that. But notice the word that he talks about, he said, fear, fear not, and you heard it. Mm -hmm. so Jesus always said, fear not. You know, you don't want to see things that you, you, that you understand my word and you heard my word. You have that fear in your in spirit. But let me tell you the fear that I think more, I, maybe I could be wrong, but I think maybe all of us sitting here at one point in time in our life that we had some fear of tactics in our life. I've had it many times. One of the fear things that came across me, and I and I just thought about that word fear, is have you ever been on an airplane and um, you have some violent turbulence? I mean, where and this happened, this is a truth. I'm so glad that God gives me things that's happened in my life that I can share. On an airplane, uh, uh, we've been on cruise ships where the, the, the ship has been violent me on the ocean. Mm. But I've also been in an airplane in the, where, where the airplane turbulence was so violent that it literally grazed on the back. So he was sitting in the middle of the airplane, grazed, grazed the tail end of the the back end of the airplane straight up and it came down fire. The only thing, and because, you know, we were here in church and we were in, in studying under the pastor Martin, and, and one of the only things that came to my mind, because I had no control, you have no control over something like that. Right. So the only, and my wife, man, she tried to get me in my face. She had my face, I thought she was going to, I feel the end of breaking my face. <laughs> and, and, and all I can say at that time is that said, Lord, you control the thing. Lord, you control the And that's all I was saying until it, it would calm down and then it would start again. Then I'd come back again. I couldn't say because I realized I'm not in control of this plan. But I do know that God's in control of this plan. Right. I did have such a in my big brain to say, Lord, God, this plan. And he, he, and I'm quite sure that I could hear, you know, you could hear things on the plane, you could hear other folks praying out loudly on the plane because of the violence of the church. So we knew when you were trouble, and, and God has told us in his word many, many times, fear not. I'm, I'm, once again, he says, fear not, I'm, I'm right there with you. And, and that, those things should come up in our spirit when we have that fear and that doubt. I'm right there with you. That, that sort of should calm you down. Lord, because I'm telling you, if you keep on focusing on the fear itself and not focus on what God has said to us in Bible study, Sunday school, or your own study, that God is saying, don't worry about it. I'm right there with you. I'm in this situation with you. Call on my name if you can't call nothing else. And that's what... When fear comes up to me, I say, Lord, and, and trust me, uh, the first time we talked about fear, I don't like to talk about Vietnam, but I remember the first, second night I was in Vietnam. I, I didn't, because the guy I thought that was a joke. This was not a joke, really. When we got into what they call base camp, this is the area where you, you were sleeping at, eating, whatever, mm -hmm. before you go out in the field. And they didn't say anything. And there was a battery of artillery. And when you hear three guns, boom! You know, the first time you heard something that loud, the first thing I did, I turned over my whole bed on top of me. <laughs> There's that fear. I didn't have sense enough to call, Lord, what's going on there? And all I wanted to do was try to protect myself. <clears throat> but there was other things that you had to do, run to the bunk and all that stuff. But I had nothing. I, but as I got older, and as I was speaking now, I truly and thank God for his word yeah. and his teachings about the word fear. Because God tells, not only do you say it, Pastor, it's in the book. Yeah. God said, fear not. Yep. All right. No matter what. You know, I feel like a ninja, man, when the thing happened to me now, Lord. <laughs> you know, because you, you, you call on the name. Yeah. Call on him. Fear not. You know, the, the, you know I'm protected. And he is a protector. He protects, he knows his children. Right. 
even when I'm at the grave, he's gonna count. He still know I'm here. That's right. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> it's, it's, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, when they put y'all on the plane, you know, y'all were headed to a, a destination. When, when I was stationed here, they put us on the bus and drive us to the airport in Monterey, you know, and we sit on the bus, you know, like we were going to get on the plane and go somewhere. And, you know, you get nervous, especially the first time. You're like, where are we going? You know, you get nervous, but I can't imagine the two of you, when they put y'all on the plane, y'all were going somewhere. Yeah, y'all were going somewhere. So if I was a, a little anxious about sitting in the Monterey Airport on the bus, I can imagine y'all we all on the plane headed towards that destination. Amen. God is good. Yes, sir. On page 105, he says the Lord, he said Joshua followed in that, that paragraph, the decisive victory at the very bottom. It says Joshua followed the strategy the Lord had given him. That, that's important, that he followed the strategy that the Lord has given him. And we have a strategy also in God's manuscript, in the Bible. We have a strategy that God has given us, too. And it's important for us to uh, do our best to try to follow that, that what he has uh, laid out for us. And then at the end of that, he says he hamstrung the horses. So now the horses are no longer weapons of war. You know, they're no longer weapons of war. Uh, uh, and so, you know, Isaiah tells us what, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. They're no longer weapons of war. Uh, you know, these horses are, are no good for, uh, for battle anymore. They burn their, their chariots. Uh, and so, so uh, God took them out of the picture. And then on page um, uh, 107, and we talk a little bit about this, Fear is always a deadly enemy of God, will, and grace. Fear, like dry rot, does its work unnoticed until all of a sudden our courage collapses. Um, and and that I, I highlight that. And then down at the very bottom, where he says another fear that frequently inhabits us Christians is the fear of taking risks for God. We uh, tend to play it, play it safe. There are, you know, when we get the opportunity to witness to people, you know, we, we, we should take that opportunity when it comes about for us. You know, we never know uh, when God has put us in that spot where we are witness to somebody who is seriously lost, you know. And, and, and our witness may, may be something that changes their lives that turns their lives in a different direction. And so when we get a chance to, to witness to people, we should do it. And, and not everybody wants to hear you witness, you know. I don't want to hear that. Well, it's not our job to chase them down the street. You know, we tell them what does says the Lord, and then we let the Holy Spirit deal with it from there. You know, um, I, I have a, uh, a daily bread that I put in the, in the lunchroom at, at work. And, uh, and you know, every day, you know, there's a different day. I turn the page and whatever. But well, somebody's been turning the page for me. Somebody's been turning the page for me. And I think, look at that. Look at that. I've been putting it there for years and years and years. And nobody's ever turned the page, but somebody's turning the page. So that means somebody's reading because they're turning the page. And so, so you know, we, we, whatever it is we can do, you know, however it is that we can witness for God, uh, we should do it because we never know when God puts you in that situation where you can help someone who truly uh, is looking for a change in their life. The last thing, let's see here, uh, and it's the same thing we've been talking about on page 108, says, uh, but God's word is to us uh, no different than it was then when he gave Joshua over 3,000 years ago. Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thy hand. For us, this means that the Lord will be up with us every minute of our 24-hour lives. Even when we can't feel his presence, he is there. He is there. And that's something we have to make sure that we understand. Amen? Amen. Let's put our bookmarks on page 108. Comfortable in Gilgal. Bookmarks there. Any other? Come on, come on. Sir.
Right. Amen. Because that, that, that's a great point. Because some people play with God. Some people play with God. You know, uh, you know on Sunday, they, they got the, the good suits on and they're walking around and looking pious and all that stuff. And then get them out into the real world and see what they are really about. You know, some people, some people play with God. We should always take God at his word. And we should always uh, uh, take take God uh, uh, seriously. You know, I, I love to put put humor in my in my uh, in my my, my sermon. Uh, you know, one reason to make sure y'all awake. But but uh, but I, I love to do that. You know, you can have joy in, in, in the Lord. You know, but but I never I never do it uh, loosely where I'm not serious about the Word of God and. Uh, you know, and, and and I like that. You know, what God said. You know that 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 lines up with God is a promise keeper. They took God seriously when He said, "Fear not, do not be afraid." God is a promise keeper, and even when you're going through it, uh, you you still got to understand that if you're going through it, He'll bring you through it. Amen. 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 Any other comment? your mind off of devilish thoughts. And it takes your mind off of the devil trying to get into your mind. With me, you have, the devil ain't going to have a chance. Let me speak first. I'm not, not going to talk about devilish stuff to you. I'm about having fun. I enjoy Bible stuff because it's, it's a learning. Oh my God, man. If folks just come to Bible study in Sunday school, I don't know what they think. And we tell them, you tell them Sunday for Sunday. 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 I mean, anytime you sit up under the word of God, there is something that you can learn. Yeah. 
Pastor used to tell him, he used to encourage people, if you can only come once a month, come once a month. Yeah. You know, we, we, we continue to encourage people. Yeah. We continue to encourage people. Amen. Any other comments? Come on, Rip. people do on, on Sunday when they get out of their, their suit and their, their dress, they get out of their Christianity too. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Amen. This is this was, this was a good lesson. Good lesson. Amen. Thank you guys for your comments and your participation. And again, you know, we just talk. You know, I want people, I know some people that, they don't think they know they're smarter than the teacher. Then come teach the class, right? Because we're just talking. Just come teach the class. Everybody's invited. Everybody's invited to participate. You know, to to share. That's what we do here. And so we'll keep we'll keep telling people, and you know, we'll keep crying. Amen. Keep all our minds are clear. Father in heaven, Master, we are grateful for this lesson that we had tonight. Father, we're grateful. For all those that are in the sound of my voice, Master, I thank you, Father, for ministering to me tonight, Father, for the things that I'm going through, that I know, Father, that you would never leave me nor forsake me, Father. You are with me, and you will bring me through every little thing that's going on, Father. 
And so we are grateful tonight, Father. And we say thank you in advance, Father, for what you will do. We pray, Father in heaven, that you would bless this church, Father, and all that inhabit it, Father. We ask, Father in heaven, that you would touch a heart, Father, this week, Father, and have them to realize that without you in their lives, they are lost, Father. We pray, Father in heaven, if you just happen to sit us in the path of someone walking in the darkness, Father, that they will see the light of Christ in us, and maybe they will ask us, what must I do to be saved? We pray, Father, for those that may be sick among us, that you would touch them with your merciful healing hands. And now, Master, we ask that you watch over us, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence. That you watch over us to wherever our destination may be, whether across the town or across the street, Father. We ask that you guide us safely to that destination. Then, Father, put the spirit within us again, Father, that we gather in your house to give your name, the honor, and the glory that is rightly due. We praise you. We thank you, Father. We pray these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen.